Previously on the bill. Do yourself a favour. Get back and get me. <laughs> I, I, I might be scared to see the night. Did you kill her? Yeah. Car gone. Front door open. They've made a run for it. I only wouldn't do that. Not willingly. He must have forced her to go. No sign of suspect Scott Burnett, nor PC Honey Harmon. I think you need to get onto the kidnap squad. I'll want an all ports issued immediately. And get me the FLO log for Scott Burnett and any relevant contact details for his family and friends. Who knows PC Harmon best? Yvonne Hemingway? Along with Steve Hunter. Well, before all this, anyway. I want PC's Hunter and Hemingway standing by for interview. I've got his mobile on a speed dial. It's got to be worth a go, hasn't it? I've got Scott Burnett's bank details here. Of course, there's always the other possibility. I mean, let's face it, if he killed his first wife... Can you take this down? Nobody's watching us. We're going to have to get rid of this car, aren't we? Come on, you're the cop! I need time to think. What do you mean, you need time to think? I'm on the run for murder here. You said you'd come with me, honey. Someone's ringing me from home. That'll be your lot, won't it? You can trace this. What do I do? Just switch it off? Tell me! It will be giving out a signal, so take the battery out. You do believe me, don't you? That it was a heat of the moment thing. Scott, take the battery out. Look, I know I made a terrible mistake, but I'm not a murderer. I didn't kill Karen in cold blood. Scott. No, without you, I don't have anything left to live for. I need you to trust me. Please, just say you believe me. I believe you. I know a place in the Pyrenees, miles from anywhere. What do you reckon? No, they'll be watching all the ports by now. We won't stand a chance. What if I said I knew a bloke who's got a boat? You're not serious. Bank card, credit card, and my pin numbers. Okay, you take 500 of them each, and you do the same with yours. I'm going to call him now. Who? Davy. The guy with the boat. I love you. MIT will spend the rest of the day asking us what honey likes for breakfast. Meanwhile, Scotland dragged off God knows where. Are you blaming me? Did I say that? I'm gonna get a roasting from Lorel. I don't need one from you as well. So why did you tell honey about the glove? Because I trusted her not to say anything to Scott. I'm an idiot, alright? Alright, thanks. See you. He's gonna do it. Who is this guy? Davy. I've known him since I was a kid. We used to go down there every year for our summer holidays. We're close. We can stay in the beach house. What beach house? Where we used to stay. Belongs to my mad old aunt, but she never goes there these days, so no one knows it's there. We'll be safe. Here. Take this. I need to make a phone call too. Why? If I'm gonna trust you, then you've got to trust me. Look, there's a shop over there. We're gonna need some food. My life's in your hands. You know that, don't you? What's your take on this? You know the officer. 
Yes. Well, let's suppose that you've just found out that your husband of the month is a murderer. How am I going to react? Well, how's he going to react? That's more of the point. You're the man. Well, I wouldn't let her turn me in, that's for sure. I, I prefer to see Scott Burnett's sister before tomorrow. I can try again. So you subscribe to the kidnapping theory, then? Well, the danger in a situation like this is thinking either or. It's more complicated than that. I mean, for a start, they love each other. Well, you assume, anyway. Love changes everything, as the song goes. I want to be involved, sir. You already are, Steve. D. Samuel's going to ask you a few questions. Can you wait outside? Sorry to interrupt, Mara. Apparently, a thousand pounds just left Scott Burnett's bank and credit cards accounts less than ten minutes ago. Cash dispenser on Silver Dean Avenue, along with another thousand from PC Harmons. Can you get a car to pick up all the CCTV footage from that location, mm. please? Who are you on the phone to? Why is it so important? Well, because husbands and wives don't have secrets from each other. Yeah, I know they're not supposed to. So why don't you tell me? Don't speak to me like that. I don't have time for this. We need to hire another car. Come on. The glove that links Scott Burnett to his wife's murder. Yes, Mum. You told PC Harmon about it when Inspector Gold specifically instructed you not to. Why? She saw you at the station and she wanted to know what was going on. She deserved to know the truth. I trusted her not to say anything. Oh, and you think that was sensible, do you? No, Mum. Do you still trust her? Well, in that respect, of course not. But I don't want to believe that she's gone of her own free will. Because? I like to think the best of people. It's a weakness of mine. Ever thought you might be in the wrong job? What are you waiting for? I don't understand why you won't tell me who you were on the phone to. I don't know why you need to know. Because you could have been phoning one of your mates at the station, for all I know. So that's how much you trust me, is it? What am I doing to you? Maybe you better go. What? I'm giving you permission. I don't want you to suffer because of me. I don't want you to feel like you're being blackmailed into this. Look, I know this is massive for both of us, but... What do you want to do? Well, look, how about we just... We just drive and talk, okay? And you can ask me anything you want to know, and I'll be 100% honest. Now, I want you to come to France with me more than anything. But if you make up your mind you want to go back to Sun Hill, I'll put you on a train. No questions. I need you to be 100% sure of every decision that we make from now on, okay? We got a deal? I was just leaving a message from my mum. That's all it was. Honey, I'm sorry. Let's go. Have I ever thought that I might be in the wrong job? I thought she probably didn't mean anything by it. Oh, yes, she did. And, like, I needed that boost to my confidence. And to top it all off, tomorrow would have been Shirley Moss's 16th birthday. Oh, everyone, I'm sorry. Oh, don't worry. It's another one in the catalogue of my king-size cock-ups. Look, this honey thing's getting to all of us. It's all right to be upset. Here we are, this moment. See, she's given us a signal. She knew that we'd be watching us. And it's the same with the cash withdrawals. So what are you saying? I'm saying that she's deliberately leaving evidence to help us. She doesn't exactly look like a kidnap victim. No, I know this officer. There's no way she'd go on the run with this guy. She is trying to help us catch him. Yeah? Sorry to interrupt, but uh, the tape has just arrived. Honey left a message on her mum's answering machine this afternoon. I thought you'd better hear it straight away. Mum, something's happened. I can't 
talk now, and I'm not sure how it'll all turn out, but please don't worry. Still think she's trying to help us catch him? Well, this is it. Just wanted to show you the place. What do you think? It's beautiful. No, I mean, what have you decided? I don't know what to think anymore. Well, I don't know what else I can do. You've asked me everything there is about Karen. I've been completely honest. I've nothing left to hide. I mean, are you going to accept what happened, or am I going to turn around and put you on the train back home? You mean everything to me. But if we're going to move forward, I need to know that you don't think I'm some kind of monster. Of course I don't think you're a monster. Everything's changed. Everything I need to be true about you has been completely turned on its head. And what are you saying? Nothing makes sense to me anymore. I'm on the run from the police. I've left my whole life behind. My job. My mum. Well, you got me. And I'm here because I love you. So? So I can't run away from that, can I? Honey, Davy. Davy, honey. I'm just making tea. Do you want some? So, Karen Mark too, eh? Birthday, darling. Spoon don't stand up in it. It's not a cup of tea as far as I'm concerned. Sugar, honey? No. So, he's fallen for it again, has he? That love malarkey. I told him last time it wouldn't work out. Did I not, Scotty? He's always been a cynic, Davy. Not at all. Ever read any psychology, honey? A bit. I read a lot of psychology, biology, science, that sort of thing. It's all about the genes, right? Love's got sweet, funny atoms to do with it. Just nature's way of fooling you, so them genes can reproduce themselves. That's why us blokes are how we are. Hey, Scotty. Them genes want to spread themselves about a bit. Once they've had their wicked way with one woman, they're straight on to the next. Which I guess is why you're here, honey. Now, I'm guessing that as you two are in need of a boat, you're in some kind of trouble? Am I going to be enlightened? Yeah, can we do this outside? Not bad, eh? All right, everyone. Right. All we know is that Honey and Scott Burnett are missing. Obviously, once MIT have got any definite news, I'll make sure that you'll be the first to know. But if any of you have got any information that can help find them, then please report to DC Gary Best. Right, is there anything else? <clears throat> PC Hanson? Well, it's not really my place to say, Mum. Sorry? Well, some of us are a bit concerned that Dan hasn't handed in his officer safety report yet, Mum. What's this? It wasn't that big a deal, Mum. It was if there were knives involved, Dan. Knife? It was one knife. Uh, and why haven't I heard about this? Oh, it went through Sergeant Smith, Mum. 
Three men, wasn't it, Dan? Came at you with a knife yesterday afternoon. I think it was just a pen knife and they didn't come at me. Don't put yourself down. You know they did. But you saw them off, Mum, and we're all really proud of him. Mm. And have you told CID? As I say, Mum, I think PC Johansson may be exaggerating a little bit. Well, threatening a police officer is a very serious offence, no matter what knife was used. And there's your colleagues to consider, remember? I want that report in at the end of the day without fail, all right? Oh, yes. Another thing. Property lists. Mm. Now, I know it's a drag, but it has to be done. Just don't take any notice of it. He's been a wind-up merchant. Does it on purpose, and he wonders why he can't keep a girlfriend. I love you, all right? Nothing to do with jeans or anything else. I just do. He's on side, which is the main thing. So he's going to take us across the channel in his boat and drop us off in some little cove somewhere? Yeah. No customs, no harbour master. None of that nonsense. Well, then what? Well, we've got over £2,000 in cash. We'll hire a car, buy a couple of train tickets, anything. Then what? Well, like I said, I know this place in the Pyrenees. Yeah, but what do we do when we get there? Well, we've still got all that money. Which will last about a month or so, but then what? Well, you keep saying then what? Yeah, I'm trying to be practical. Well, what is this, cold light of day? No. So why are you trying to make it sound so difficult? Because it is. At least if we stayed in London, we might have had a chance of buying ourselves new identities. How are we going to do that in the Pyrenees? Well, if we stay in London, I wouldn't be able to show my face. I'll be picked up any minute. Now, I'm the one looking at the life sentence, remember? Oh, calm down. Look, if you're getting cold feet, then just say because I can't do this thing unless you're with me 100%. I'm not getting cold feet, but this isn't going to work out by magic. Well, there's great picking, bar work even. Nobody asks any questions, there's no tax, no national insurance. Most of all, we have each other. Where are you going? Well, I know we said evening tired, but I'm just going to be sitting around waiting. There's nothing to stop us going now. I'm going to speak to him. I don't think you wanted to arrive in daylight. I changed my mind. I just want to get out of here. Hello, I'm Burnett. Do you want to come this way, please? Why are we going through all this again? I told you the last time I haven't had anything to do with my brother in years. I don't like him. And I know it's wrong to speak out of the dead, but I didn't like his wife either. Miss Burnett? I'm glad you could make it, finally. We're hoping we'll get some background information from you. I'm missing a whole morning away from my desk because of this. Can I get you a cup of tea or coffee or something? I just want to get out of here as quickly as possible. Regular domestic goddess, ain't you? Where's Scott? He went looking for you. I know. I saw him coming. And that's when I decided to come looking for you. And what do you want? <laughs> now, this is the thing with women. See how you react there? What's that about? Acting all frightened. I'm not frightened. You wouldn't be the first. I have this effect. Karen was exactly the same. Do you mind? I know we learned to get along. She used to tell me things. What things? Especially when she'd had a few. Very fond of the old red wine, Miss Karen. Scott never mentioned that. But there's all sorts he hasn't mentioned. Not necessarily in his interests. Why are you here? Why are you here? More to the point. See, the thing is with Scotty, nice black, don't get me wrong. Only you can't half tell a whopper when the mood takes him. You know it's that. And the story told me earlier had the whiff of whopper about it to me. I just wanted to check it out with you. What did he tell you? Karen's been murdered. And the police have stuck it on him. Is that true? Why would he lie? Oh, let me think. I was very fond of Karen. 
Only Scotty never knew that. He never could abide another man so much as looking at her. Not that I ever did. But still, it wouldn't have been wise. Not because I was scared of Scotty, you understand. But I was scared for her. How do you mean? Like I said, she used to tell me things. According to Scotty, it was Karen's bit on the side that done it. That true? The murder. You're a very pretty girl. But then, so was Karen. You absolutely sure you want to go through with this? Sure. And I'll be left with a clean conscience at the end of it all, will I? Evening tide, then. What's up? The purse is missing. When did you last have it? The flower shop. I put it back in my bag. I can see myself doing it. This is all I need. Where else you been? Uh, the cemetery. To lay flowers on Shirley's grave. Come on. Where are we going? Hope you're not free. What about your refs? I think this is more important. Steve! Do you still want to be involved? Yeah, of course. Well, Scott Burnett's sister's demanded a lift home. Morel's nominated you. Is it something I've said? No. Nope. You've been right off with me all morning. Don't have to be chatty all the time. Of course, it could be post traumatic stress. We mustn't rule that out. Look, you shut up! What have I said? It wasn't me who said there was a knife. Sorry? Who said, was there a knife? And I said, maybe. I don't get it. There never was a knife. Well, why didn't you say that at the time? Surely you're not trying to make out you were braver than you actually are? Sorry, but what's up saying you so much? <laughs> Goodness knows, perhaps it's something to do with being told my brother's a murderer. <laughs> Silly, isn't it? Your colleague, that detective woman, DCI Morell. God, she was obnoxious. And she wonders why I don't want to talk to her. Well, perhaps you could talk to me. I had the flowers with me, so I can't see how my purse would have fallen out along here. It was probably when I was at the grave. Are you looking for something? I might be. Why? It wouldn't be this by any chance, would it? Oh, I don't believe it! Hey. Funny enough, I just finished it. I was going to drop it off at a cop shop on my way back. Oh, thank you so much. Look, you made me cancel my credit cards. I'd be grateful. Oh, where did you find it? Just by one of them graves up there. Oh, it must have been when I was laying the flowers. Look, here. Oh, don't be daft. No, I want you to. Go on. Look, I can't take your money. I didn't do anything. Oh. Here. Look. I'd have been really cut up if I lost that. So you see so many bad things in this job and then something like that happens and it really restores your faith in human nature, doesn't it? Did you, um, notice the wheelbarrow? No. We had half a ton of flowers in it. So? Well, why would someone have a wheelbarrow full of fresh flowers and be going out of a graveyard? bunch of lilies. I paid 25 quid for those. I get my hands on that little. Well, that was a waste of time. You've been ages. Two hours trying to get hold of Davy. The silly sods disappeared off the face of the earth. And the good news is we're not in it. I take it we've missed the morning tide. Yep. Davy's going to pick us up in his Land Rover at six, which means we've got another, oh, five and a half hours. He's really off with me. Something's not right. The fact is, there's no plan B, so we've got to trust him. What have you been up to? Waiting for you. It's 
It's not like you. You normally use a knife. Davy was here. That's why you couldn't find him. And you were going to drop that in the conversation at what point exactly? He didn't mention he'd seen me then. No, curiously enough. He just wanted to check your story out, that's all. And you said? That it was true. Did he believe you? I think so. How long was he here? No more than a few minutes. So why didn't you tell me, honey? Thing like that. Why, why didn't you tell me as soon as I came through the door? Well, I was going to. You <laughs> lie! Wasting our time, Tony. I tell you, I've seen him before. He pitches a stall around here sometimes. Here you go. Those are my lilies. That's Pete Thomas. He's the right villain. Some flowers for the lady. I've only got soy milk. I'm allergic to dairy. Oh, no problem. Cheers. So why did you and Scott fall out? He broke her mother's heart. She was dying. He knew she was dying. Him and Karen had a holiday booked. He didn't want to lose the deposit. A load of cobblers, of course. The insurance would have paid up, but he just didn't want to see it. He seems so charming when you first meet him. Mum adored him. He treated her like dirt. When that detective lady told me they were after him for murder, I was surprised, but not that surprised. He always had a cruel streak. Karen was an idiot. She should have left him years back. She bought into the lifestyle, and that was that. Only I've got a personal interest in this. His new wife, the one he's run off with. Another bimbo, I'll bet you any money. Well, she used to be my girlfriend, so I'm very anxious that he gets caught. If he was going to run away, where would he go? Him and Karen used to go abroad, but I told all this to the detective lady. I mean, in this country, is there an old friend or family you might turn to? You might not think it's significant, but it might just be the piece of information we're looking for. There's Mum's old address book under the stairs. You can have that if you like. It's horribly out of date, but it, it might be of some use. That'd be great. Cheers. Is Scott knew his children? A million years ago now. Come away from the window. Someone might see you. Hey, see Casper? You spoke to see ID, yeah? I ain't had a chance yet, Mum. What? I don't... Gary, here. Here, was threatened with a knife yesterday. Would you put an entry on Chris and do the initial investigation, please? Thank you. Find us later, yeah? No, I'm an environmentally friendly criminal. I recycle. You're actually a thief, Lee. Well, who was I thieving from? You know very well. They're dead. That's not the point. Look, laying flowers is like symbolic. But once you've done it, you got what you paid for. Who am I hurting? Me, for one. One of those bunches of flowers was for a friend of mine. You know what you're doing now, don't you? You're letting your personal feelings interfere with your professional judgement. 
that they're only going to end up on a compost heap. This way, I'm extending their economical viability and removing myself from the burden of the state. Do you have a street trader's licence? You're just being mean now. We've been looking through our records, Lee. Give me a break. Well, you're not exactly the chirpy little streetwise barrow boy you'd like us all to believe that you are. Year before last, you were done for handling stolen goods. Remember? 500 catering packs of baked beans found in the back of your van. But that was all a misunderstanding. They were for my own personal consumption. And it was just a coincidence that your cousin Pete was working in the college canteen where the stuff was stolen from. Absolutely. The fact is, he was the one doing the thieving, but you were the only one who was done for it. Doesn't seem at all fair, does it? Well, who said life was fair? What's your cousin Pete doing these days? You'd have to ask him that. No, it don't. Because we phoned the hospital. He's working there in the kitchens now, isn't he? And it was him who made a quick exit when we arrived. Apparently, the hospital's looking into a 5% shortfall in catering stocks. That's a lot of baked beans. It's just a coincidence that your cousin Pete's working there now, is it? No comment. It says here you've got six months suspended for two years. Now, where are we now? Like you might look at it as recycling, but a judge is going to see it as thieving. And with those two years suspended hanging over your head... Hardly seems fair, does it? I mean, there's you looking at six months in prison for stealing some poxy flowers. They weren't poxy. Correction. Exquisitely beautiful flowers. And then there's your cousin Pete. Now, our information has it that he's swanning around in a flash motor, less than two years old. Now, how can he afford to do that? On catering assistant salary. You could help us, Lee. And do yourself a favour at the same time. Where's he storing this stuff, for instance? I don't know anything about it. Why don't you put your thinking cap on and see if anything comes back to you? You finished your property list yet? No, Reg. Well, don't you think you ought to? Yes, Reg. Come on, Emma. I'm trying to do you a favour here. You're only going to have Gina Gold on your back. Yes, Reg. Mate, I've got five minutes if you want to take that statement about yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Look, actually, Gary, can we leave it till tomorrow? I mean, I've got a whole mountain of stuff to get through today. Well, don't leave it too long, yeah? Yeah. Hello, oh, Danny boy. Get lost. Don't you think you ought to start being nice to me? No one need ever know, you know. Assuming I keep my mouth shut, that is. Everything's for sale, Dan. Even my silence. Stop doing that, please. Makes me nervous. So what did he say? Exactly. I'm sorry? You know what I'm talking about. Davy. What did he say? I've already told you. No, not everything. Something's changed in you and I want to know why. I'm going for a walk. We'll talk about this when I get back. I'm not going anywhere. Then what happened to oh, I don't want to control you, honey, and I'm never going to ask you questions you don't want to answer? Shouldn't push me, honey. It's a bad mistake. I'll be right there. Yes? I've got some information. Go on. When I drove Scott Burnett's sister back home, she gave me this. It's a mum's old address book. And? Well, I've been going through the numbers. Oh, yes? And I've just spoken to an aunt. Turns out she's got an old beach house in Kent. Apparently Scott used to love going down there. The kind of place that make a perfect hideout. According to her, he took Karen there last year. Give it to the receiver. I thought you were going to leave me. I didn't mean to do that. I hate myself. Why would I want to hurt you? I love you too much. Is this how you used to apologise to Karen? Oh, I get it. This is what he said, isn't it? Davy. That I used to knock her about. Is that what he said? And he got that from... Karen? Yeah. I slapped her. Once. To hear it from her, you think I've broken every bone in her body. I mean, you think I'm a liar. That woman taught me everything I know. She lied to me from day one, right up until the end. 
Even when I knew about her and Greg. Even when she knew I knew, she continued denying it. What do you mean, when you knew? You said you weren't sure if Karen and Greg were having an affair. Honey, please. That you'd only just started to suspect the night that she went missing. You said it was in the heat of the moment. Don't stop loving me. I'm not a killer. Not like that. Oh, my God. I'm not a killer. I don't believe this. You set out to kill her. No. No. I wanted to confess straight away, but... I just, I lost my bottle. I knew what a jury would make of it. What they'd say, they'd say I planned it, but they wouldn't know how I battled with it, how I struggled with myself. A hundred times I said, just, just go, just walk away. Leave them to it. It just it eats away inside you. How could you? Dave is going to be here at six, and this time tomorrow we'll be halfway to the Pyrenees. No more lies ever again, I promise you. Please forgive me, honey. I'm begging you. Too far in now, aren't I? Cheers. How are we doing in here? I want a brief. That is your right. But of course I could fix it for you to be bailed. And then if you were to volunteer some information, I might find I have all sorts of difficulty finding anyone who actually owned those flowers. And then we'd be forced to forget the whole thing. He's family. He let you take the rap before though, didn't he? Look, Mama, do I not? She doesn't need to know. Nobody needs to know. You don't even need to testify. Just show us where your cousin is storing the stolen goods. That's all we need. The rest is up to us. You're a bright bloke. You've got your whole future ahead of you. Prison's not going to do you a scrap of good. I'm giving you a chance here. Don't throw it away. Just do the right thing. The only confirmed sighting is when they hired the light green Yaris from Concept Cars at 15.30 yesterday. Nothing since then. I've got ten officers working their way through a mountain of information on friends and family, but... Yeah? Message for you from Telephone Investigations. Scott Bennett's mobile started giving out a signal again. Still no sign. It's not even a quarter to yet. You've no idea how much better I feel now I've told you. Well, we should leave this place as we found it, shouldn't we? Less clues. And what did I do with the key? My jacket. Well, I'll get up. That's all right. You put the battery back in. there to discuss. You betrayed me. One minute you're saying you believe me, the next you're double-crossing me. It's not that I've just suddenly stopped loving you. I don't believe this. Nothing's changed. Yeah, that's exactly what she said. I still love you. Nothing's changed. All the time she's sleeping with my best mate. So why did she say that, I wonder? Maybe she meant it. Or maybe it had something to do with a wheel brace I had in my hand at the time. What do you think? I think we need to get back in the car, go back to London and turn ourselves in. Yeah, apart from a small matter of a murder charge waiting for me there, it's a great idea. Have you any idea what you've done? You've killed your wife in cold blood! Were well, you not listening to Let an innocent man take the blame, spun me a string of lies! Yeah, because I love you! Because I didn't want to lose you! Just give me the car keys. No. Okay. How about we tell David that you've changed your mind, but that I'm going by myself. It's open! Who are you? David's got a problem with the engine, but he's fixing it. He sent me to pick you up. Got any stuff? 
Is there a problem? Go back to Davy and tell him to call the police. He'll understand. Go! Just do it now! What have you done? Oh, no. You're joking me, aren't you? Oh, no. You're all right. It's not your fault. Have you alerted oh. the Kent Constabulary yet? Let's go. Bad news, Gov. TIU have just lost the signal. Whoever turned the phone on has just gone and switched it off again. So, we're looking at this area here. A lot of ground. The contact that Steve had, the relative with the beach house, was it in Kent? Yes, ma'am. The address? Right, well, that's right here. Everybody! The police will be on their way by now. So you can either do this a dignified way and hand yourself in, or make a complete fool of yourself. It wasn't all a lie, you know. I did love you. I still do. Do you hate me? No. Will you do one last thing for me? Scott. I'm going to walk out the door. And I don't want you to come after me. You won't get five miles. Please, just promise me, if I ever meant anything to you... It won't do you any good. Just promise me. I'm begging you. I promise. I oh, know I'm a fool. But I'm not all bad. Change my mind. What? I can't do this. Take me back to the station. Forget Bell. Charge me. He's my cousin. I can't do it. Boy did well. Catering packs of Italian peel tomatoes, baked beans, meatballs, spaghetti oops. It's enough to feed a small army. Well done, Lee. We're proud of you. Let's just forget it, yeah? What's this? It's a bit late to have second thoughts now, yeah, me? Oh no! We're not going to nick him while you're here, so just sit tight. No! Lee! 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 Just wait! Slate Road. No sign of him either. I'll come up and go. Tony, I got him. Hang on, I'll be right with you. What do you want to do that for? Lee, you're not doing yourself any favours. Come on. Good. 
quick as you can! Come on, Scott! <coughs> Scott! Thank God! I promise that. I know, I'm sorry. I can't stop loving you. It's not like that. Yvonne? He came at me. He had me in a headlock. I don't know what happened, but I swear to God, I only hit him once. Next time on The Bill. He's got a fractured skull and internal bleeding. I'm more curious about the events in Sun Hill, specifically whether you were abducted by Scott Burnett or whether you chose to flee with him. You knew you'd be striking him on his head, a red area. He was choking me, sir. I didn't have any choice.